Dealing with student lunch debt, there's no real good answer or solution. In an effort to end lunch shaming, student lunch debt has exploded within Fargo Public Schools. On top of that, the federal government is asking the district to raise the price of school meals. Valley News Team's education reporter Veronica Marshall breaks down the issue and looks into what can be done to solve the problem. Studies show that you can't learn if you're hungry and so we want to take that basic need and make sure that it's fulfilled so that students aren't distracted by being hungry. That's why Fargo Public Schools decided to feed all children hot meals, even if their lunch account was empty. And while students benefit from the change, the district's food services program doesn't. This year we're currently at negative $26,000, um, which is an increase from last year, which is our first year with the new policy. Um, last we ended the year about with about negative seven thousand dollars in debt and some of that hurt is being passed on to families as well if parents are non-responsive for a long time and the balance has grown past a certain threshold we do work with collection agencies um, to try to collect some of those funds but now the school district has a new problem to deal with the federal government wants the district to raise the cost of school meals. So USDA requires the schools to reevaluate their paid meal costs because the free meal reimbursement is higher than the schools normally charge for a paid meal. And so they don't want the free meals to subsidize the paid meals. The newly raised money would help the food service program pay its bills. But even the modest five cent per meal increase could help expand the school lunch debt putting Fargo Public Schools and its families between a rock and a hard place. In order for the Fargo Public Schools to keep up with salary increases, food price increases, also the, just the cost of replacing equipment and improving their cafeterias, they need to make sure that they have a consistent revenue coming in. I think some families would obviously benefit or appreciate a, de a decrease in price. But education experts say residents can help by speaking out. The recourse would be to go back to our politicians, our lawmakers at the national level because this is a federal program. And there has been some consideration of that already. We hope legislators are uh, responsive to that and, and consider that. In Fargo, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. The proposed five cents per meal price hike is being discussed during tonight's school board meeting. If it is not approved, the food service program may have to borrow those funds from the school district's general fund. Meanwhile, another Fargo school will be able to offer free meals to all students next year. Now Jefferson Elementary will join Madison Elementary in offering all student meals for free. Been noticing how the weather has been changing over the last several hours. That's going to continue. Eventually, parts of the valley could get rain. Let's find out from Justin what's ahead for this evening. He's here with your no wait weather. And thank you, Mike and Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Yes, another warm one out there. High temperatures now ranging from the upper 60s to upper 70s into the Southern Valley, which is a few degrees above average for this time of year, even though we do have a little bit of a breeze from the north. Winds around 10 to 25 miles per hour. So across the region, we are seeing mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. The rain is missing us off to the east and off to the west as we stay mainly dry this evening. Temperatures will uh, fall back through the 60s into the 50s and we will see a decrease in cloud trend overnight as most of us turn mostly clear with decreasing winds. We're going to see more of the same of what we saw today tomorrow during the daylight hours but in the evening we do have a chance of some strong to severe thunderstorms and that'll really cool us off going into the weekend. We'll have everything you need to know coming up later in the newscast. Weather's always changing. Yes it is especially Thanks. this week. Thanks Justin. One man has been arrested after police say he stole something from Coles and took off in a gold Ford Ranger today. 35-year-old DeAndre Francis was arrested for theft, reckless driving, fleeing in a motor vehicle, and several outstanding warrants. Police say they chased Francis south of Columbia Road, then east on 36th Avenue South, and then north through a parking lot and over 32nd Avenue South. Francis was eventually taken into custody behind an apartment complex. Crews in West Fargo are currently dealing with downed power lines at the intersection of 2nd Street East and 5th Avenue East. We're told a truck with its arm up drove east on 5th Avenue East and pulled three power poles up from the ground. You are asked to stay away from that intersection until further notice.
The Fergus Falls Police Department is asking for your help identifying this man from a holiday gas station. If you have any information about him, you're urged to contact Detective Renner at this phone number, 218-332-5528, or you can email him arenner at co.ottertail.mn.us. The man who threw a five-year-old from the third floor of the Mall of America in April will spend 19 years in prison. 24-year-old Emmanuel Aranda pleaded guilty to the charge of attempted first-degree murder. Aranda reportedly told police he was angry at being rejected by women at the mall and was looking for someone to kill. The five-year-old boy miraculously survived and is no longer on critical condition. Aranda has two past convictions for assaults at the mall, both in 2015. The Fargo Police Department and the Fraternal Order of Police invite you to attend the 24th Annual Law Enforcement Memorial Day Ceremony at the American Legion Memorial Fountain in Lindenwood Park tomorrow at noon. In 2018, 163 law enforcement officers died in the line of duty. In their memory, 163 U.S. flags will stand in a field of flags to honor the brave men and women who gave their lives in the line of duty. Speakers will include U.S. Attorney Drew Wrigley and Fargo Police Chief David Todd. The ceremony will be held rain or shine. Hop on that bike, pedal to Town Square and Grand Forks, and put up that kickstand to receive a free brew. The Downtown Association in Grand Forks says the event is all about getting people to experience what downtown has to offer. Now, this event will go until 8 o'clock tonight, so you still have time to get that free coffee or beer. If you live in Deer Creek in southwest Fargo, keep this in mind. Your nor normal route will be detoured. It's because of a short-term drainage project on 63rd Avenue South. It will last from the 15th through June 5th, of course, weather permitting. After 9 a.m. tomorrow, crews will fully close 63rd Street South between 53rd Avenue South to the new elementary school campus. All traffic will be exiting Deer Creek on Cheyenne Street and taking a right toward the 52nd Avenue roundabout to follow that east toward Veterans. Also starting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., the southbound lanes of Center Street in West Fargo will be closed from Main Avenue to 7th Avenue Northeast. Crews will be finishing repair work. The closure will last until 2 Friday afternoon. The state of North Dakota is letting you know about the health effects of manganese in drinking water. Environmental officials say people need some of this mineral to stay healthy, but too much can be too harmful. North Dakota does have naturally occurring manganese in water, but the level should not contain more than 0.3 milligrams per liter. For infants, tap water with levels above that mark should not be used for drinking or making formula. Bathing, washing dishes or clothing with water containing high levels is not harmful if the water is not ingested. Later on Valley News Live at 6, an interview with actor Josh Dumel talking success, failure and staying inspired. And mainly dry today. We made it up to 76 in Fargo. We should be near 70. And tomorrow will be the last day we're going to see temperatures above average, unfortunately. We'll have the full seven-day forecast coming up next.